recent eBay listing for local collection just up the road from where I live. Retro PC including screen, Windows 98 with Matrox, Mystique GPU and Sound Blaster 16. I couldn't help myself. So I committed to getting this in my own mind as long as nobody else bid for it because it's not really a computer that I needed in my collection. But then looking through some of the other photographs there were some interesting little things that weren't mentioned in the listing. Not least of which was this odd little screenshot which has a listing of some 3DFX drivers. Now there were no photographs at the back of this machine, just some pictures of the front and of gameplay on it. Um, I, I never really know what to do with things like this. I didn't really want to ask the guy any questions in case he didn't realise that if it had a 3D FX card in it, it should be worth more money than he was charging or, or whatever. So I just chose to stay quiet and see what happened. Though you can clearly see what happened. So I bought it, got it for the reserve price, and here it is. So it's a really nice, clean little machine. The guy clearly was an enthusiast. So this is like a home build and... There's not much to say on the front. It's got a CD-ROM drive. It's got a floppy drive. It's got a badge already, which is a bit disappointing because I do like putting my own badges on. But it's already got a Pentium 1 badge on, which gives a clue to what's inside the machine. Though that, again, even the processor wasn't listed and the speed wasn't listed in the eBay listing. So if we turn it round, it is indeed what I'd hoped for. So there's the pass-through cable for some kind of voodoo card. So... It's going to be either a one or a two, but fingers crossed for a two, but you never know. So there's a whole bunch of stuff on here. We've got a whole bunch of expansion cards. We've got serial port and parallel ports. We've got our voodoo card of some description. Then next to that, we've got another card which has another serial port and a PS2 port for the mouse. And then we've got the graphics card, the Matrox graphics card, I guess. Then couple of USB ports and then that Sound Blaster 16 that was mentioned as well. The previous owner clearly made an attempt to make his own faceplate for the IO panel just having the AT connector and then we've got a pass-through cable as well. Lids off, let's get the stuff out and take a look. First out's the sound card, it's a SB16 CT2940 Plug and play, no OPL, though some of these did have real OPL, this one uses CQM which is the Creator's own synthesis that's built into the Vibra Pro chipset. And now the graphics card, the first of the graphics cards, and it's the Matrox Mystique, and it has an empty memory expansion. So I've got one of those, I think, so you should be able to upgrade this. I think it takes it up to four megs, I'm not really sure. And I was always in awe of these cards. They were very expensive. I always desperately wanted one, mostly just because of the very cool advertising. They used to always see this jester character on the back of magazines. Alas, it was all lies, at least in terms of the 3D that they're boasting about there with its proprietary APIs and such. There's a good reason why people paired them up with the next card as I pull it out and oh, it was a super, super shiny card. And this whole machine is really clean. I don't think I'm even going to fully disassemble it because it would just be taking it apart for the sake of it. So I'll take out the bits that I can't see just to see what they are, but I'll kind of leave the rest in place. But yeah, look at this, a Maxi Gamer 3D. So that's Guillemot or Gilmo as pronounced the French way. It's a four megabyte Voodoo 1. Oh, would it be nice if it was a Voodoo 2, but I'm certainly not complaining. Don't think there's anything special about this card. It's basically just a slightly jazzed up. I don't think it's it's quite the same as the reference card from 3DFX, some slight changes, and mostly just colour and cosmetics. So cool. So looking inside, it's sort of a bit sad. This guy really has built a lovely little machine here. It's very clean, it's got decent components, even some cable management going on here. So it's kind of sad that he had to part with it, though he did kind of mumble something about his wife having told him 
this house isn't big enough for that, get rid of it, or something like that. Anyway, it's come to a loving home, and here it will stay. So I'm going to clear away some of these cables, and pop the drive bay out, have a little look at the drives, and getting the cables out of the way should clear the space so that we can see what's going on with the motherboard. Okay, we've got the drive bay caddy out now, so we've got our 1.44 megabyte floppy drive from Sony. And in the hard drive department, we've got an IBM Desk Star. 13.6 gigabytes, so it's a decent size for this machine. Made in Hungary. 1999, November. So the power supply is an ATX supply from SunTech, 300 watt, and it has the negative 5 volt on there as well. And the optical drive is a Samsung model SC148. I believe this is a 48 times CD-ROM drive made in March 2001. And it has a compact part number as well. So it probably came from a compact machine originally. The motherboard has both SIM and DIM slots. And it seems to have one stick of SD RAM in there. And it says it's 128 megabytes. So the motherboard's from Chaintech, model 5 SIM. And from what I've read, Chaintech didn't have a great reputation back then, largely because they based all their boards on the SIS chipset, and the SIS chipset didn't have a very good reputation either. But the reviews I've read about this particular model say that it's an okay board, and it was a bit of a step up for Chaintech at the time, and an improvement over the previous stuff that they'd been putting out. So the motherboard doesn't come with an I.O. panel, it has an AT keyboard connector and it also has power supply connectors for both AT and ATX. And as we noticed when we took the memory out, we've got four slots there. Two of them are for 168-pin DIM memory and the other two are for 72-pin SIM memory and that can be either Edo or fast page mode. Looks like bus speeds run between 50 and 83 megahertz. The multiplier is 1.5 to 4. And it has four PCI slots, three ISA slots, and it has an award BIOS. And then there's the usual collection of breakouts for the serial ports, parallel ports, and such like. Though the floppy drive and the IDE channels are all built into the board. So straight away we can see this is a Pentium MMX of some description. And flipping it over, it runs at 200 megahertz. So second fastest Pentium MMX. So it's not a bad little chip for this machine. Okay, I took the CPU cooler off and the thermal pad on top was kind of intact. It was a bit weird. So I cleaned it all off and splurged some new thermal paste onto the CPU after I'd replaced it. And when I went to remount the CPU cooler, I saw it was kind of sitting on top of that capacitor that's down at the bottom right of the CPU socket. So I don't think this thing was ever sitting properly flush with the CPU. And I had gently teased that capacitor out of the way and it is now fitting better and should be cooling better, hopefully. All in all, I'm pretty pleased and excited about the things inside this machine. So going to get it all back together again now and fire it up and see what it looks like on the screen. Okay, for the first boot. So I know this machine works because the guy demoed it when I went to collect it. And so I'm just going to give it a quick going over to make sure that I haven't put it back together incorrectly and I had and there was a few failed attempts because I must have inadvertently pulled the hard drive IDE cable slightly out of its connector on the motherboard so it wasn't detecting the hard drive and, but once I pushed all the cables in securely everything was fine and we get our first boot. So confident that it all works I can put lid back on the box and then set it up to look like a usable system. So I'm going to use a little CRT monitor that I've had kicking around for a while and let's hook the sound in and boot it in and have a look at what we've got on the hard drive. <laughs> Oh, 
But before we go any further, the urge to put a sticker on this thing has just proven to be too great, so you might have seen me fiddling away to the right of the screen there, frantically going through my sticker collection to see if I can find anything that I can put on this machine. So I didn't really have anything, but the um, the only thing that I had was this uh, year 2000 compliance sticker, so I'm going to stick that on there. It's been through the IT department, and it will make it through the millennium. And what I'm probably going to do is order some stickers to go next to that Pentium sticker on the left. I'm going to get a badge for Matrox, a badge for 3DFX, and a badge for Creative to go along the bottom left there. The machine doesn't seem to have anything personal on it. The guy said that it was a fairly clean install of Windows 98, but it's Windows 98 with the plus pack, which is nice. And it seems to have all of the drivers correctly installed for the, the Millennium and the 3DFX card. So I can't really see any reason to mess with this. I think I'm just going to use it as is as a starting point and maybe back this up so that I've always got the bits and pieces that came with the machine. And on this hard drive, there are a shed load of games. Absolutely loads of them. Amazing. Whether or not they work or not, or require CDs or whatever, we'll find out. But it's going to take me a while to work through all of these. So we've got a copy of Baldur's Gate. Classic RPG. I love my Dungeons & Dragons. I was playing it with pen and paper well before I ever got into computers. Uh, this one's asking for the CD. I do actually have the CD, so that's not an issue. So cool. And there seems to be a fully installed copy of Quake 2 on here as well, which is good. And I was quite excited to see Gabriel Knight from Sierra, Blood of the Damned. Unfortunately, this one asks for a CD, and this is really crap. It asks for CD, and if you haven't got CD, it doesn't give you any way to back out of that that I can find so you've literally got to reboot the machine which is just rubbish and it looks like we've got a full installation of Syndicate Wars to play with so that's a pretty good one I've got it in my collection but I've never actually played it yet and then I got caught out another Sierra game that when it asks for the CD doesn't let you exit and graciously go back to your desktop which is a bit annoying but Worth it just to hear some more plus pack reboot music. <laughs> And then we've got a game I know well, June 2000. It's not my favourite game. My favourite game is June 2, and June 2000 is merely a sort of reskin of that game. So they sort of brought the graphics up to date, tweaked the gameplay a little bit, but the map, maps and missions are identical to June 2, but June 2 is just an awesome game. June 2000 is okay, though. And then there's another strange one, the Sega game called Comic Zone, which is... I've never seen anything quite like this, so it's like a comic book but you step from one frame to the next and each frame is like a mini level so your character can physically walk out of one box into the next and then that will become something like a beat-em-up and they have to fight the character in that. It's a cool idea. Never heard of this game. Definitely going to be looking into it. There's some older stuff in here too. So we've got Duke Nukem and I guess this is the very first game in the series. It's like a side-scroller. Can't say I've ever played any Duke Nukem games, even Duke Nukem 3D, which is kind of standard fodder for anybody who's supposed to be interested in retro games, but so I might give that a go. There are a whole bunch more games on this hard drive in various states of playability. Some of them are missing files, some of them need CDs that I don't have, and some of them are complete and work, so I need to sort it all out and put them somewhere safe so I've got them I might go searching for some odd missing discs that make, will make some of them work on eBay but I think I want to call it a day for this video now rather than go through and randomly try a long list of games it's a awesome little machine I'm really pleased to have taken something that somebody who really cares a lot about retro computing has gone to the effort to, to build this thing and at least it's come to somebody who's going to give it equal care and attention uh, in fact, I like it so much, I think it's probably going to become my primary sort of early 3D Pentium gaming machine. It's probably going to find a permanent place in the retro room. So, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. I hope you've enjoyed this 
experience of exploring this new machine. And if you did, it'd be great if you consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing or leaving a comment below. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.